What's up, everybody? It's Heat Override, and I'm ready to bring the pain for you this weekend, Dr. Roto. Another crazy week in the NFL. We got injuries. We had we had defensive injuries. Man, Alul Kuhn's down. Singleton's down. If you need some help with replacing both of those players, head over to drroto.com right now and use code word DOC so that you can read my IDP articles and find the right players to help you win and dominate this week and going forward. Oh, yeah. It's time to bring the pain. Yeah. Now, like I gave you earlier in this week, I had talked a little, 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 little crap on the Tennessee Titans. But first, we'll be nice and we'll go over the games. Bills destroy the Jags. I brought that up briefly. And that is why the name of this episode is Super Allen Takes Command. But at the same time, Josh Allen looked amazing. The Bills looked amazing. This is why you need to listen to DFS experts and not sport analysts. Sport analysts are in it for the money, and all they're doing is just blowing smoke up your arse. And what they're doing is lying to you. They're telling you, they're giving you false hope when they tell you that you should be rostering all of the team and not the main player. And the main player in this game is Josh Allen. I've said it for five years. I said it before the season. People thought I was crazy taking Josh Allen in the second round. Yet this past week was a reason why I take Josh Allen in the second round. Yes, I lost in week two on a couple of my teams with Josh, well, not one, with Josh Allen, right? Because he had 8.9 points, right? But week one, he had over 35, and this week he had like 48. So whatever, and that's because we have jacked up scoring in that league, whatever, you know. But you can't just say like Khalil Shakir or Keon Coleman or Dalton Kincaid, all of those players right there, James Cook, that they're all, they're going to get the type of work that they're going to get, you know, 12 catches, 212 yards, and three touchdowns. It's most likely not going to happen on that offense, and that is because Josh Allen is the ringmaster. Whereas on other teams, like the Colts this week, who we're going to pick on, and so you'll have to check out my ultra contrarian show, because, man, I got a pick for you. But because the Colts, the, they run through John Taylor, right? Jonathan Taylor is their bell cow. He's out there the whole game. Right now, Pittman is almost non-existent. People are trying to... Tra- I, I went into my trades, and I think this dude screwed up because he literally traded me no player and just wanted Michael Pittman. I'm like, bro, you. I didn't even accept it because I was like, this dude had to be super drunk that night. To, <laughs> I mean, I ain't saying he's tipsy drunk, but at the same time, it was one of those things. It was like, why are you just saying, hey, take him for free? Who is who gets that mad? Well, a team that sucks and has a has a running quarterback like Anthony Richardson. Now, uh, on the next game, I, I owe some people some apologies, but at the same time, he was a killer. But man, Trevor Lawrence has looked stagnant out there. He's doing nothing. He's literally doing nothing, dude. You were first round pick. You were supposed to be like the next Andrew Luck, and you're not. You're not, you're not even nowhere near it, bro. I used to like it when you would get weird and start running and stealing touchdowns from Travis Etienne or whatnot. Now you don't even know how to be play football. It just is like, I mean, okay, so that's the bills. You got punked. I get it. But you guys haven't looked good all year. So at this point right now, you, you, you're, you finally got Christian Kirk involved in a blowout. That makes no sense. You're looking like you're going to get Evan Ingram back this week, and that's great because you need him, and so does my fantasy football teams need him because I haven't had anything from him all week, all year. But, however, if you're smart, Brenton Strange, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, right? But we're, now we're sitting here sitting here flying out and talking all this, this crazy nonsense, and you're not getting your playmakers the ball. You got Brian Thomas Jr. on the team as well, and he's, he's, he's not getting the ball either. So I don't even know what's going on with this team. I mean, I know what's going on. They suck. And that's easy to say. But at the same time, how can you suck? 
you have one of the league's best, supposedly best running backs. At this time last year, Travis Etienne was literally cashing in for all the people who thought he was going to be a chump. This year? <laughs> yeah, have a good time with that one. Let's move along. Commanders and the Bengals. Man. 38 to 33. Look, okay, so the Bengals are exactly where I thought they would be, around 33 points. Uh, apparently, the Bengals forgot to play defense. They couldn't stop Jaden Daniels at all. So Jaden Daniels, I went on social media and I said Jaden Daniels couldn't hit the blind side of a barn. After I made that comment, he must have saw it because he didn't miss a pass like the rest of the game. And that's that's fine, bro. And I had a bunch of your Jaden Daniels people trying to call me out. Well, yeah, look, oh, he's going to be good. He's going to be great. Look, I want him to be good. But here again, going back to Anthony Richards, we do we want him to be good or is he good? Ask yourself that question, because when you look at Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts, well, sometimes he's a little weird. And, you know, amongst other quarterbacks, even Aaron Rodgers, everybody doesn't even like that guy anymore. But guess what? At least he tries. At least he does some. He can at least throw the ball. Right. But you got these guys and they're just not putting it out there. I will say right now, Jaden Daniels is looking a little better than Anthony Richardson, but I think Anthony Richardson, the way he's surrounded, is going to just be a pay off dividends. But I will also give you some game theory coming up against the Colts because uh, the macho pick of the week, yeah, yeah, you're going to love it, right? So you can probably already know who it is. So when I'm looking at this, you, you're, you're, not, you're not doing anything for your, your team. You're out there. Jamar Chase is having a great day. You're passing it around. Zach Moss finally looks good. That's the Zach Moss that I wrote up that everybody hated all year. But yet, I was the guy who said he was going to have a breakout. So let's have a breakout, Zach Moss. I'm on your train. <laughs> right? But at the same time, we're sitting here looking at all this other stuff with the Bengals. Dude, your teams are falling apart. Your coach can get canned. Zach Taylor can get canned for this stuff. You can't just be letting it superstars like that out there and just blowing out, getting getting beat down by the commanders who do have a makeshift defense. They're okay, but they're playing well together. Look, the Redskins are playing good. If the Bengals were playing like the Redskins were playing and played in that game, they'd have blew the Redskins out, but they didn't. And just like all the preseason content at Dr. Roto, I want to say it was Trevor or Luce said something about it. Maybe I'm wrong, but they said the Bengals are going to be the seller dweller. I agree with that too. I also have Pittsburgh winning the division. And right now that's looking pretty good as well too because teams just don't do what Pittsburgh does sometimes. That defense makes a difference. And that, that defense is so good. Look what it did last year with Mason Rudolph and freaking Kenny Pickett, Pickett, Pickett. Man, I, did I even need to say more? So Jay, Justin Fields is an upgrade over all of that. All of that. The only thing the Steelers do lack is receivers. And that's the thing, too, and that kind of goes back to the Jags. They never, you know, they don't have that big receiver anymore. Christian Kirk isn't a number one. He's a backup. He's like your third string wide receiver. He's, our, he's wide receiver three. Wide receiver three putting up wide receiver four numbers up until this last week. So if you're going to really jump on any of those bandwagons, you know, I did listen to Docs and Danger and Trevor. They did the first look. And, they, and he brought up a Tommy G comment, Duck did, and said, you know, he, he said, you know, this guy sucked. I think it was Andy Dalton. Sucked. He said, nobody's going to play him next week. So Doc did bring up playing Trevor Lawrence this week. I like it. It looks good. I think with Evan Ingram back, he's going to be able to work the middle of the field and finally get Christian Kirk. Don't be surprised if the Jags win this week. But they're going to have to do something because if this goes keeps going on like this, then you're going to be fired, bro. See you later, Taylor. You know, bring the pain to you. Oh, yeah. But <clears throat> so switching gears right before I want to get to the macho pick of the week, since this is the hit show and I am talking my, my smack, right? ESPN and Yahoo went and added a double header for Monday to all championship games. Now, I got people because I'm, I'm the commissioner. I got people all mad because I'm in the third place game. So I'm looking at this game, too. But not everybody has players for those players, right? And what ESPN did, ESPN actually added one more start. So normally in my league, it's an eight-start week. 
So I give them kind of like, you know, a little leeway to pick and choose what they got, but enough to make some nice points to catch up with the batters. Now, now they got nine. That one pitcher is the difference. But you get that pitcher the last day, you get two pitchers on the last day when you're behind and all of a sudden, boom, you get it. Or you have a, you have a game like Shohei Otani and you have three home runs on a Monday, a game that pro- that would have been broken up over, you know, two days and may have not happened that way, may have happened that way. But at this point, the adding of the extra pitcher because it goes the extra day, that's a killer. That, because some teams are geared more offensively than defense, than pitcher wise. So now you that person with them better pitchers has the advantage or is it, but you would think the batters, but like I said, Right now, nobody wants any part of that game, and that sucks. But, hey, we got to put up with it. That's how we're going to do it. But guess what? For the Macho Pick of the Week. Oh, oh boy, the Tennessee Titans had Macho Man wanted to drop the elbow on him. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know what's wrong with Will Levis. Next time I see him, I'm going to throw him across the ring, and I'm going to give him a chuck to the chest. Yeah. Let's get to why you're here. Oh, yeah. And that's for the macho pick of the week. I don't care. I said it last week. He should have had a bigger game than he did last week. And the only way this man will have a great game is if you make him the macho pick of the week. And it's Najee Harris. Yeah, I almost did it there. I was real close to it. You heard it. Man, he's killing it this week at his price right now on DraftKings, 5500 Fandle did price him up at 66 That's still not bad. That's still not bad. But, man, now, now this is what I'm going to talk about, the Indianapolis Colts. Indianapolis Colts are without DeForest Buckner. They are, they are getting injuries down low, which is going to hurt them. And right now, Kenny Moore is banged up. Kenny Moore doesn't play that game. Then there's going to be problems. But I do got to give it up for Nick Cross, Zaire Franklin, and EJ Top Speed. You know, my guy from last year that I said everybody should go get and uh, IDP hero, man. Yeah. So let's get to some bets here. Free bets. Yeah. Right. Anytime touchdown right now for Najee's plus 100. Not bad. Get it now. Right before it goes down because it could go negative. And at the same time, over 55.5 alt rushing yards, you get a negative 185. The 60.5 on this is DraftKings I'm talking about. The 60.5 was i think a 230 at the moment or something so it's just it's just way way higher you don't need to play that game you get you get five yards less and you get a better number a better odd so why not go for that when you parlay like that together you get a plus 132 without a bonus multiplier that's how you're gonna bring the pain to the sports book have a great day everybody and always remember to bring the pain may the bets and may the tackles And may the macho pick be with you. We're coming back this week. Yeah.